Hello, Sinister Ones, and welcome to Twisted Stories with Phantom876. Tonight, we'll be reading a story called I'm Quitting My Job as a Truck Driver by Dead underscore Harpy from the No Sleep subreddit. Let's begin. I'm fairly new to this whole trucking driving experience. I took up this lifestyle a mere six months ago after I suffered an excruciating 10-year gig at a health insurance call center. With this new driving job, I typically transfer auto mechanic parts statewide. The job pays fairly well for my humble lifestyle as a bachelor, and grants me an adventure with every route. The past six months have been so liberating compared to the 9-to-5 hellhole that gradually chipped away at my sanity. I couldn't take another second sitting in that suffocating cubicle without going absolutely psychotic or strangling myself with a headset cord. The open wo road was my savior. I spent every day traveling somewhere with my own truck and blasting my own music. Long gone were the constant hums of countless telephone ringing and the mundane chatter of my soulless, soulless office co-workers. I have been able to explore the nooks of my state, and I've met so many interesting characters during these travels. Despite the liberation that truck driving delivers, after this latest journey, I think I'm ready to hang my hat and leave this industry altogether. You see, this last route took me along the desolate old dirt road out through the boonie outskirts of Armorillo, Texas. The delivery started as any other. I was to transfer custom automobile parts to a receiving facility in the heart of Armorillo, with my departure began in Fort Worth. I had quite the extensive drive ahead through the plains of Texas. The drive was unremarkable and lengthy. I drove through numerous boony towns that consisted of rusted buildings, depleted streets. The interstate highways offered no saving grace from the dull drive at all. Vast brown plains extended on either side of my truck while mesquite trees folded over themselves, starved for a drop of water. Dry tumbleweed skittered alongside the dry breeze as if in an effort to escape the scorched earth. This pattern kept going until I reached about 70 miles outside of my destination. Twinkling stars danced along the night sky's horizon as brights in my headlights illuminated the vacant two-way road ahead. It had been over an hour since a vehicle had sped past my truck at a mile marker labeled 140. Not a living soul besides myself inhabited the road. I was all alone. At my side, the looming shadows of Tangled interrupt, erupted from the pitch-black plains, their dead branches curled up like wretched claws reaching for the glimmering stars in the inky sky. The empty road ahead, coupled with the silence in my cab, caused a creeping eeriness down into the roots of my soul. I knew just the cure for this dilemma. I began to quickly fumble with the radio dial, seeking to cure the unease of the piercing silence into living the damper atmosphere. I was met with drowning static with each radio station I dialed through. I furrowed my brow as I knew that the lack of radio signals should have been impossible with my proximity to the city. I sped past the mile 66 marker while pondering the cause of the radio's inability to receive a signal. I altered from peering at the radio and to back to the desolate road when a flicker of light caught my eye in the side of the mirrors of my truck. This pinprick of a single headlight shined through the immense darkness behind me. Finally, I thought a motorcyclist embarking on a late night cruise will relieve my spirit. Sighed a breath of relief as the loneliness began to disappear from my racing mind. I turned off the radio and refocused my attention to the long stretch of hoed ahead. I peeked back at the side of my mirrors to check on my lone companion. My breath caught in the dry in my dry throat. Well, it was a print prick of light evolved into a bright orb of luminosity in the matter of seconds. How did this traveler manage to get so close of distance in such short moments? Their figure was still obscured by the cloak of darkness, but their headlight was rapidly intensifying as they sped forward. I slowed my speed to allow the traveler, the traveler to bypass my truck. I glanced back to the left side of my mirror to discover that this was the motorcyclist was now maintaining a healthy distance beyond, behind my truck. My heart stopped. Upon closer inspection, all my previous presumption of this person was rendered false. This was no motorcyclist at all. In fact, it was a bicyclist. How in the hell did he pedal in the means of move so damn fast? Perplexed, my eyes squinted to further study this phenomenon. Almost immediately, my situation went from quite odd to absolutely terrifying. The figure was entirely naked. 
The smooth white skin covered its tall, thin frame, and possibly long, crooked arms extended from the handlebars of the bicycle. Pointed elbows jutted outwards towards the dark sky as enormous claws gripped the bike's handles. This person's legs were too long for its body. Its sharp knees projected outwards, meeting its wretched elbows. The figure was comical. I mean, its body was just too damn dull compared to the bicyclist's petite frame. Its face was the most horrifying of all. It was entirely smooth and devoted of both eyes and a nose. White skin stretched over its hollow eye sockets all the way down to a sharp spear-like chin. However, an incredibly wide mouth extended to where its ears should have been. Rows of jagged teeth, similar to a shark's, decorated an impossibly broad smile. It pedaled it with a merry tempo, slowly zigzagging while its long limbs side past each other's disgusting dance. I floored on the gas pedal. My heart pounded as the truck's engine roared with all the horsepower it could muster. I could only see the bike's headlight fade into a minuscule ball of light as the distance between us speedily increased. I exhaled the trapped air from my lungs as the figure disappeared from view. An anxious sweat slithered down the goosebumps on my neck as my heart strained to regain a regular rhythm. What the hell was that thing? My mind anxiously pondered. My truck regained as much more legal speed as the adrenaline began to decline from my body. My eyes captured another mile marker along the side of the barren road. Mile 66. Hell no. No, no, no. This mile marker should have been long gone. I know I passed along before that creature made its appearance. I had no choice but to press forward. What other option did I have? My tight grip on the steering wheel caused my knuckles to turn bone white. I made another glance at my mirrors. My gaze was met with an empty road behind me. I tried to regulate my breath as my eyes shifted to the shadowy plains on my left. What I witnessed almost caused me to swerve off the road. That, for creature, that forsaken creature was pedaling right beside my truck. Its smile was so damn wide that the top half of its head caved in towards its backside. Its razor-sharp teeth embellished a gaping black hole that it was its mouth. I hit the gas pedal in hopes to escape my tormentor once again, except this time it kept up. Speed. Its long, spindly limbs appeared as if they were in overdrive, scissoring up and down with intense extortion, its head tilted up to the sky as if it was laughing at my pathetic efforts to escape. Up, down, up, down, up, and down, and it went its honed legs as it maintained speed with the acceleration of my truck. My breathing intensified, and my heart thudded with was only raw fear. I quickly shifted my eyes to the right side of the road. My old marker 66 reappeared once more, and I released a brutal wail. As if in mockery, the enter entity began to cheeringly zigzag its bicycle in delight of my panic. Its frenzy pedaling persisted as I tried to escape. What the fuck do you want from me? Leave me the hell alone! I screamed at the top of my lungs while hot tears streamed down my quivering face. The creature shook its white head to the sky, letting out a silent laugh of pleasure. Suddenly, it slowed its speed to a lazy stride as if it was a taking, taking a casual ride out. I accelerated once more, and the figure faded from view. I cried. I cried like a baby cries for its mother. Why was this happening to me? Why was I the victim of such torment? What was that thing? Now, I'm not much of a believer of the paranormal, but I'm definitely reconsidering my worldview once I reach Amarillo. I slowed as another mile marker made its way into view. Mile 66. My heart dropped as I continued in the only direction I could go in. Onward. This continued for several more minutes as I sped forward as my truck crept over a low hill. On the other side, waiting, the creature was casually bicycling forward, now in front of me. How did it manage to bypass my truck without my notice? It was beyond me. I had thrown out all logic and reason many miles ago. The creature slowly spun its head to look at me. Its body was still facing forward, its mouth stretched into that terribly insane smile. Suddenly, it bellowed a screech of a banshee. My blood ran as cold as ice. However, I quickly devised a plan. If my fate was to suffer in this purgatory, I didn't want my tormentor to exist in this hell alongside me. I pounded the gas pedal with all my strength and raced forward. This only made the creature smile wider. My heart pounded so hard I thought I was going to burst it 
in a bloody heap from my chest. Closer. Closer. Ahead was mile marker 49. Closer. Oh my god, please work. My truck collided with my assailant. Its thin, wiry body entangled upon itself as it hit my windshield. A collision of thuds could be heard atop of the cab. I screeched to a halt. I put my truck in park and exited. There was the creature's bicycle in front of my truck. Its wheels were bent over themselves like a dying roach curling in death's wake after being sprayed. I slowly paced towards the back of my truck and peered behind the cargo bed. The creature laid mutilated in the road. It was a broken mess of limbs, cracked in all unnatural directions. I peeked at its face. Even in death, its wide, razor-sharp smile pointed to the sky, having a final laugh. I started to hear cracking. The bastard wasn't dead. Its limbs began to fumble for stability. It snapped its neck, and its horrifying grin met my eyes. I wasted no time, and I sprinted back into my truck and floored the gas. In my mirror, the creature began to crawl upside down on all of its broken limbs. It scrambled like a black widow ready to capture its prey. It gave one last pre scene screech from its terrible mouth as I left. The creature was left into the dust. I drove for what felt like hours. The road laid vacant as the black plains begun to sprinkle with scattered house lights. I passed a sign once more. Armorillo, 25 miles. I was free. I made it to Armorillo not long after. I delivered my shipment and phoned my boss immediately and gave my registration. I have no idea what happened on that goddamn night. I don't know what that damned creature was. What I do know is that I'm scarred beyond repair. I sincerely hope that car call center will take me back.